This video is a follow-up to the previous video on the Einstar Rocket, and I've had a chance to play with it and get some familiarity with the XStar Hub software in the Einstar Rocket, and I'm pretty impressed. It's pretty expensive still for what it is, but I think 3D scanning is one of those technologies that is still relatively immature. So it's going to be expensive and a little finicky. So since this is a 3D printing channel mostly these days, I thought what better way to test it than to print something directly from the scan. So this is a 3D Benchy, and if you've been in 3D printing for a while, this is a little benchmark print that comes on most printers. It may be the first thing you've ever printed. It certainly was the first thing that I printed. And this specific one was printed on my Bamboo X1 Carbon. It's a little bit under extruded, but totally fine. And it's because I didn't calibrate the filament, but it won't cause any issues for this use case. Now what I've done is taken this 3D Benchy and constructed an apparatus in order to scan it. Now, the reason why I had to do that is because this Benchy is rather small, and it's actually smaller than the, than the type of items that you would scan with this type of scanner. So what I've actually done is put some markers on a Lazy Susan spinner, and that will give me some orientation. Now this worked initially, um, but I had to make some further adjustments because I couldn't get the bottoms of it. So what I've done is put some more markers on something else, in order to be able to scan the bottom of it and have markers in view of the scanner from multiple angles. Now this worked pretty well. I was able to get most of the hull and a lot of the detail and really the only thing that I couldn't get too well was inside the roof of the 3D Benchy and that's to be expected. You need line of sight to get data to the scanner. So I've used the different modes in the scanner and I stuck with the 38 line crossed mode and you can change that during the scan. I have some ideas about that as well that we'll get into in this video. I went through the process of scanning this Benchy, taking into the software, doing very minimal modifications. I didn't smooth it out very much. I used the in-software functions only in XStar Hub. I didn't take it into Blender and make any large corrections. I basically filled the holes and gave it a small amount of smoothing just so it would print with less errors. And then I've reprinted it. So let's get into the video. We'll move over to the software in the process and look at some of the issues that I had next. All right, excuse the different microphone here. I'm on the recording in Premiere now in post. Uh, this is just connecting the Einstar rocket. I had to connect it with the USB cable because I won't let you do the calibration over Wi-Fi. Uh, no big deal. Once we get to the calibration here, we'll just speed through it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you've got to keep it really square vertical above the calibration plate and it'll give you a couple orientations that you want to make sure it captures. Once that's completed you can start creating your project so I'm just going to make one called Benchy and choose the laser scan that's the 38 crossed lasers it's for high detailed items um, IR you would want to use for anything that is lower detail and larger and here you can change the alignment modes I'm sticking with markers because I've used those and already showed you that. And then once you've set all your settings, you can also choose to acquire the texture here. That's going to be helpful if you're taking this into Blender or making it a game asset or something. And I'm gonna stop right here because what I want to show you is something that is very, very annoying with this software. You cannot disable the loss tracking chime it just constantly beeps no matter what you do. I'm going to let you hear it once and I'm going to mute it for the rest of the video. So here goes. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. Just nothing at all. It, there's an option in device settings and it just keeps doing it. Um, I sent them an email to see if they can fix the software, but this is one of those things that if you don't mute it and you're not standing next to your computer, it is extremely obnoxious. I'm super not happy about that, but it is one of the things with proprietary software, it's made by one small group of people. Um, so there's not much we could do about it. What I'm showing you here to move on is the Benchy with the markers just on a sheet of paper on the Lazy Susan. It does work okay. This has the texture added on top of it. And I'm able to kind of delete all of the other stuff that I don't want. It's kind of a waste of memory to save all of those points and then go ahead and delete them. But sometimes you don't have a choice because you need stuff to be able to can maintain tracking. So I'll show you this first. It's okay, but you still need a good way to scan the bottom of the hull. So moving forward, this is the second attempt where I use that contraption that I showed you in the introduction of the video. 
And here I've kind of just used a bamboo glue stick, put some markers on it, and then this let me actually scan the majority of the hull. So big improvement here. We'll go ahead and speed through some of the next stuff. This is just selecting, processing, and getting some of the points deleted that I didn't want to use in the model. And then finally, sped up 2,000 times to show just the amount of time that it took to process the point map. Um, now this is got all the holes in it and I'm just applying the refinement that is in the software itself to kind of patch some of the holes, fill some of the voids, so that way I can 3D print it later. All right, next moving on into bamboo, this is just the regular slicer that you all know and love. So there it is. We're going to print these really quick. Now this is the original Benchy that I printed on my Bamboo X1 Carbon. And here's a couple of the Benchies that I printed after scanning with different level of detail. And I tried a couple different things. Now we'll add some B-roll here of the close-ups of these two. But in general, I wanted to point out a couple large... In general, I wanted to point out a couple large factors. The scale is bang on, so I didn't have any issue with it being scale, and this is good if you're doing the scan with something that you need some dimensional accuracy for. Um, the calibration process was easy and straightforward, and I was able to make these the right size without any modifications or even measuring them. It just came out the right size, so that is great. Um, the second thing I want to notice is the surface finish was not great, and the first one that I printed, you could see and we'll add some B-roll of that, that there are some surface defects on it. It doesn't look great, and I wasn't able to get inside of underneath the roof, like I mentioned earlier, very well, as compared to the one that was printed directly from the 3D model. But what I did was, after reading online, I coated this in baby powder, put it in a little bag, shake and bake style, coated the 3D Benchy in baby powder, and what that did was cut down on some of the reflections. So I was actually able to get a smoother result. Now this one was after coating the Benchy in baby powder, and this second one came out a lot better, and I've actually done an extra thing in this one as well. In XStar Hub software, you're able to combine multiple projects. So one of the issues I was running into, since I had to add a lot of extra stuff to this contraption to get it to scan such a small item, was to increase the RAM on my computer. Now it's mostly a gaming PC. It had 32 gigabytes of RAM and that simply wasn't enough. You can't really get any good scanning done with that. I've upgraded to 64 gigabyte and DDR4 is relatively expensive now. So updating my PC soon to DDR5, uh, link for that up here when that is published, if I remember to do that. Um, but for now, I upgraded to 64 gigabyte and that got me through the entry door. So once you're able to start making some scans, what you can now do is separate into projects. And when you separate a scan into a project, you'll have several different projects underneath your main project and it will align them based on the markers or the features. So there's a couple options there. Um, as long as you don't move the markers, and in this case I had to make sure that my two marker orientations did not change relative to each other, and it didn't, you can align them based on the markers and it did a pretty good job. So by doing that, I was able to combine a better scan of the hull along with a better scan of the inside. So I still couldn't get the perfect little bit underneath the hood, but it's about as good as you'll get with something this size. Now, this is pretty good for just scanning it and directly out of the scanner into the printer. If you had some skills with, say, something like Blender, you could easily take this into Blender, polish it, make it much better than it would be directly out of the XStar Hub software, print it almost as good. So there would be a couple differences because once you go through the process of removing material through smoothing, you're gonna lose edges and other features of the original print. So that's an issue that I am not skilled enough with something like Blender, so let me know down in the comments below if you do have any tips and you'd like to see that on this channel. Otherwise, I would say that this is relatively successful, but with the caveat that you do need to have some idea of how you're going to scan the item. In general, small items are pretty difficult. You're gonna to have to use markers. I did not find that feature alignment worked too well with small items, but it did work relatively okay for large items and I actually did an IR scan of myself as well, and I didn't have any issues with that with feature alignment, although I did run out of RAM. So that's another aspect where you need to have some markers in place 
so that you can do multiple projects and then align them in post. Okay, so that's the first test that I've done with the Einstar Rocket 3D scanner from Shining 3D. Let me know down in the comments below if this kind of content interests you, if you're into 3D scanning or if you're just getting into it, or if there's something you would like me to test out with scanning slash 3D printing in a future video. Comment down below, subscribe, and see you in the next one.